Okay, so pick one, anyone. First thing I'm going to do, remember, I changed the adjectives, that are the, not adjectives, Puh. my English. The, I changed the verbs for the actions in the controller, right? So I have to rename these to match. So delete would become remove. Okay, oh, and I should probably spell it correctly as well. I don't think that would really matter, but it would, it would offend my sensibility for sure. Okay, so here's our remove page, right? Okay, um, so I'm not going to make a huge amount of changes. Most of it happens at the top, right? Instead of saying delete, okay, uh, it's still the same model, a single appointment. Okay, I'm going to change it to remove appointment here. And instead of just delete, I'm going to put a nice little header. Remove appointment for patient, okay? And because the model, of course, has been loaded with the patient included, we can access the full name there. So we're making it clear right at the top of the page that we're deleting an appointment for a given patient, right? And that's basically it. The rest can pretty much stay the same. Uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom. Okay. Now, for the action, that has to be remove instead of delete. Uh, that one, that next line doesn't have to change. And no, really, that doesn't have to either. But the uh, back to list, okay, we're going to take advantage of our uh, return URL, right? So we can go back. The return URL will be the URL to go back and look at the master detail page, the index for this given patient with whatever filters and sorts and so on we had, right? And that's it. That's the only real changes we have to make, right? So it's pretty simple. You can compare yourself. There wasn't too much to do, but I have to rename and I'll change each of them. I won't make you watch me do each one. Okay, so create became add, edit became update, right? And uh, there's not too much in the way of changes here. Again, it's largely a matter of just putting that name in nice big letters at the top of the screen so we know what patient we're working on as we uh, make all the CRUD operations on a given appointment, okay? Either creating one, updating one, or deleting one. And again, we're using our return URL right, to go back to the uh, actual patient details and the master detail page. And that basically finishes that off, okay? Now we're almost done, so we might as well carry on a little bit further. We have our views in place, okay? Now we did say we want to be able to come here easily from patient. So let's come over to the actual patient views down to the index. Ah, oh, look at what a pain in the rear. I mean, what a great thing we did before having three separate versions of the patient index for different security roles, right? So we have to make sure we make the same change in all three. Actually, it'll only be two because remember there was no details available to the generic user logged in here, the index. But if they're an admin, we need a details link. Okay, so I'll just put the proper link in place. So notice we're skipping all together. We're going away from, okay, the uh, uh, patient's controller and we're going to go instead to our patient appointment controller, to the index action, which essentially is the details for the patient, passing patient ID as a route value equals the ID of the one for this row, right? So it won't look any different <laughs> looking at this view, but the action of clicking on this link will take us somewhere totally different. Now I have to do that in index admin. Let's just check index supervisor right at the bottom here in the table. There we go, here's our details link, right? So I'll put that in here. That way it uh, will f come to the right place. And just to confirm, I don't think there is, no, see there's no details link in the generic index page, so that's good. So we have all those updated, so now we'll actually come here. Now truth is, <laughs> technically we're not using this details page anymore. We could just delete it right? But I'm not going to bother just right now. 
I might find some use for that code later on. Eh, probably not, but um, I'm not going to take time to do that at this point. Okay, so we're coming along nicely. Um, one other thing we need to do is uh, change the flow uh, in the actual patient controller itself, right? Because right now, after we successfully edit or create a new patient, right now we have it set to go to the old version of the details view. So we want it to go to the new one. So remember, we did that in the post events, okay, for create, right down here, right after we save changes, we would redirect to the details, okay, passing the patient ID, right? So we're going to do the, basically the same thing, but we're going to go to our new super duper better details page, our master details page. So we'll redirect to the index of patient appointment, passing patient ID equals that value, right? And that's good for the uh, uh, create. We'll do the same thing in update. The only difference is uh, we do need to use patient to update as the name of the object, right? So I'm too lazy to change it here. I'll just steal it and paste it in. Okay, so again, after successfully editing a patient, we're going to show our new master detail page, right? So they can see all the changes that were just made. And from there, of course, they have links to go back to, right? Either the list of patients or whatever. Okay, and, you know, finally, for a little bit of icing on the cake, Let's come back down to views here for patient. Uh, right now, when you create a patient, right now our submit button at the bottom, okay, says create. I'm gonna change it, because really, the logical thing is you create the patient, the next thing you do is book an appointment. So it'll give us sort of a, almost a wizard-like, okay, step-by-step -step wizard approach to simply say next, so that after we create the patient, save it, the next thing we would do is start adding appointments for that patient. And uh, that's basically it. That's all we have to do. So let's just run it once more. And let's hope. Okay. So if I come to a patient, okay, let's... Uh, I'll edit Fred. Let's actually put a picture file in here, just for fun. And you see, it took us to patient appointment, patient ID four, right? So now we have, okay, all the details for patient Fred Flintstone up top, okay, the medical conditions, et cetera, et cetera. And I can click add, come to add appointment for patient Fred R. Flintstone, Okay, maybe uh, we're going to book the appointment on the 20th, and it will be uh, um, <laughs> okay. Hey, I told you I couldn't type. All right, there we go. Uh, no, there'll be no fee for that. Well, not, let's charge $1. And COVID-19 is the reason for that. So we'll click create. And there we see it's immediately added here. But the beauty of this is as well is we can click, okay? And we can resort by date, by appointment reason, even uh, actually that one should be changed because we can't sort by, oh, surprised it's working oh well there you go all right so um we can edit and away we go now if we had enough if i added another one we would get paging here as well right uh but the point is let me uh, change the sort order okay so uh now it's in the oldest appointment first and the newer one below. If I were to go do a delete, but decide, no, I'm going to go back to patient, notice it returned to the same sort order that we had before, right? So, and you can even see that up here, that all those parameters, the query string parameters are being preserved 
by our little trick that we learned to do last term to keep that return URL in place. If I click edit, I come back to the edit, sorry, of the patient's controller, the edit action. Okay, and I could make a change here. Maybe, oh, we're going to have to see him 10 times a year. When I save, boom, here I am back in patient appointment controller. I can see the change has been put in place and away we go. And uh, even if I go back to the patient list, uh, let me just do a, even an order here. So if I come to details, back to list, you can even see it at the bottom of the screen. Okay, it's maintaining the entire, even if I go to the second page, right? It'll know that we're on that page. If I come back again, that we're on page two. So we've got everything in place the way we want. The main advantage, the main reason, as I said, for doing this style of master detail pages is that it's the only approach that will allow us to easily use the techniques we already have for doing the sorting, the filtering, multiple pages, and keeping that all in the ch related child records. Okay, I hope you enjoy this. It should be fun.